After a lovely holiday in Italy, the Dalton family return home to find themselves just as empty as when they left. Especially the sad sack Ben, who not only lost his job, but is in the process of losing his wife, unless he can step up to the plate and be the man she knows he can be. Fortunately for our boy Benji, he met himself a good buddy while he was in Italy, named Patty. This guy's an alpha male with Sigma energy of the highest caliber, and he just so happens to really like Ben. Not sure why, no one else does. And so our premise is simple, the Dalton family is going to go on a road trip to hang out with their new friends they met on vacay and hope to keep the party going a little bit longer. If that premise sounds familiar, it's because it just came out two years ago in 2022, but this is the American version, which means we have an American ending. And a family that's not going to be near as stupid as they were before, because us Americans, we're known for being really smart. Anyway, I already reviewed this movie, didn't think too much of it, and now I'm going to spoil the living shit out of it. Join me, if you will. Before we travel down this countryside road, I'd appreciate if you could travel your ass to the subscribe button. Just hit that thing. That way you can be part of this family here on Adam Does Movies, where I post movie reviews, rants, roasts, live streams every single week. would love to have you stick around. I gave you the basic premise. This family that we're following, the Daltons, it's a husband, wife, and a daughter. They were in Italy having a good time palling around with Patty and his wife and their little child aunt. Not too much happens in the first 15 or so minutes here in Italy. We're just seeing these guys get to know each other. They're whining and dining. They're dancing. They're laughing. They're loving. They're talking about toilet etiquette and how to wipe your ass properly. That's true. That happens in the film. Whether they're a folder or a crumpler. Listen, if I have to weigh in on this, which I think I absolutely do, if you're if you're crumpling, if you're wadding up your toilet paper to wipe your ass, I can't even comprehend the kind of mess you're making. The debate with folding is that your finger will bust through. I, don't put that much force in. Maybe use two fingers, do a do kind of a side scoop. It's really not that difficult. This is a highbrow channel. To Patty's credit, he only did this because there was a snooty, hoity-toity type that likes to talk about food and how smart he is. And the Daltons were sick of hearing their shtick, so Patty smartly and inappropriately started talking loudly about the toilet thing. And that turned off the pearl clutchers instantly. The Daltons get back to London and it's clear that things just are not working out for this family. And it becomes more obvious a little bit later when it's revealed that the wife has been receiving some very tasteful dick pics from a stranger. And she's into it. Ben Dalton, not so much. You see, Ben has a lot of problems going on, mainly with his confidence, mainly with his ability to stand up for himself and on behalf of his family. And that's going to be the running theme of this film. How these individuals are too nice to strangers, how they're unable to speak their voice. And while that premise is solid, it would have been nice if there was some actual growth from Ben over this film, but there's not. There's none. It's frustrating to watch for me. Patty and Sierra send him a postcard in the mail. It's a lovely little gesture on their part. They said, hey, come on out for the weekend. Let's keep this party going. They hit it off so well. Why stop the fun? Ben and Louise hash it out for a little while. It doesn't take much convincing though. And they're off to the races. Now, I don't know if they just engage this out properly or if it took them way longer than they allude to in the film, but it is pitch black outside when they roll in. I mean, they did say they were getting a bit lost, but holy shit, guys, why are you rolling in so late? Maybe start the journey earlier on in the day or get a hotel and show up tomorrow. Again, this family's not sharp, and this is just kind of setting a standard for how stupid these people are going to be. Thankfully, Patty, his wife, and their kid, Aunt, are, are ready to go. They even prepared a succulent chicken dinner for them, which he awkwardly puts in front of Luis's face, even though she's vegetarian. This is the first test. He's testing her. He's like, hey, made this. This is fresh from the backyard. Can't remember the bird's name. Sally, uh, Margaret, Maisie. It doesn't matter. He puts up Tabitha's meat in front of her face. And she's like, mm, it's good. Oh, it's so good. Oh, Naturally, she's going to spit that on her hand and pocket it. Too scared to tell them because they don't want to insult them for going to all this work. Even though the husband and the, the daughter can both eat the chicken, she can't. And apparently that's too much to just say, hey, if you didn't remember from our extended vacation together, uh, I'm a vegetarian. So no, she's just going to power through the whole meal eating the meat. 
It's established that she does this, even though we don't see it. We're treated to a flossing scene where she's pulling out a giant chunk of it. While that's happening, the dad goes to throw out the garbage and he runs into Ant outside and Ant just goes, <laughs> Ben's really not that phased by this because his wife makes that same face every time he tries to put the moves on her in the sack. What he didn't know at the time is Ant was trying to warn him that these parents are not really his. That's gonna be the big bombshell later. This is not his family. And that was actually kind of a cool reveal. I was like, oh shit, nice, that's, that's interesting. But Ant, you know, the kid can't talk because he has a small tongue, as the folks said. Not the folks, but you know, these people, these kidnappers. Actually, they just cut it off. You'll know this because the trailer shows it every single time. <sighs> what a reveal! Between this movie and Joker 2, I'm not sure which one has had more advertising before movies. It's so freaking obnoxious at this point. I walk out. If I'm in the movies and the Joker comes up or Speak No Evil, I walk out, I stand out in the lobby, and I wait, and I sulk. I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm not sitting through this fucking trailer again. Their new friends have prepared a place for their daughter to sleep, and holy shit is it nightmare fuel. They're going to be putting her basically on the floor on this little tiny mattress, in the attic with Ant, who can't talk, but he cries himself to sleep. He's a crier. <laughs> All right, here's the weird thing. Ant isn't like Reek from Game of Thrones. He's not broken down to the point where he's scared to talk or in his way, you know, communicate. He actually is very brave and he's constantly looking for opportunities to talk to these people. All I'm thinking is, hey, you're in the attic all night with this girl. Maybe pull out a pencil and paper. Start writing, start drawing, pantomime. Uh, 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 and then lift up your shirt and show her all your bruises. I'm doing it. I mean, it's not that hard to figure out. Grab some dolls. He had all fucking night. I wish I could say things are going better for the lovebirds in their room, but they're not. Their, their, their bed has like a pee stain on it. At least that's what I'm hoping it is. Could be, could be much worse. Luis is already not feeling any of this. This is a very run down place in the middle of nowhere. No neighbors, no anything for miles and miles. Their daughter's up in some sketchy room. Their bed is disgusting. And they barely know these people who are already force feeding them meat and acting weird. Like James McAvoy never looks normal in this entire film. He's always dude bro psychotic. But Ben, being the absolute bitch that he is, is like, it's fine, honey. You're doing great for coming here. And also, I'm still pissed at you about the phone stuff, and I'm too big of a coward to just leave you, so we're just gonna we're gonna really sit in this forever. The next morning they all go for a fun family hike which is super awkward all around. The whole movie is entirely awkward. Little Agnes is trying to swing from a tree rope and Ant won't get out of her way. Patty's pissed. He grabs Ant, chucks him backwards, starts berating him. And then he, he says, Ant, go push this girl. And then he gets proud when Ant finally puts a little force into it. Not much after that, he's going to go up to Luis eye to eye and he's going to fix her neck right in front of the dad, right in front of Ben. He's just toying with him. He's like, look at the dude, I'm right up in her grill. I'm touching her all over. Hey, you know what would really help? Let's go skinny dipping. Then they make their way to the cliffs and they're all jumping in, shirts off, pants off. It's awkward, it's awkward. And then we get to a favorite moment of mine where Patty and Ben walk over into the woods further, look out at the beautiful vast horizon and just start yelling primal screams. Yeah! Roar! Benz is like, meow. That night, Patty and the missus surprised the couple by saying, we're going out tonight. We're going to head down to this place. This guy prepares a beautiful seafood meal. It's a lovely, quaint, private thing. This is one in a million opportunity. You got to do it. They fail to tell them that the children are staying back and a babysitter's coming over. At which point, some sketchy dude shows up, barely speaks English, 
doesn't seem like the daycare type. And that's who's going to be watching the kids. Are you out of your fucking mind? Listen, some of this other shit I can look away from. But now we're getting to Looney Tunes territory. There is no way a parent is leaving their kid behind with a complete stranger in a house they don't know with the boy they've barely met who can't talk and looks a little on edge to say the least. Not a chance. It's nuts. I would have said no. I I'm sorry, but the, ki the kids have to come with um, or we're staying back. It's just not going to happen. But they do it because Ben's great and his wife's just trying to hang on to this miserable marriage for some reason and not piss Ben off. They head on over to the seafood establishment, which is just a dude's house, basically. We get another super uncomfortable scene where Patty talks about how he and the missus like to role play in the bedroom. And one of them, they start acting out right in front of the couple. She gets down under the table, starts performing a very unspeakable deed. And he's like, who? <laughs> Ben is just disgusted. He's like, oh, oh, I've never, wow, what are you even doing? I don't know what this is. Luis, as she will do throughout this entire film because she's a walking emoji, will just be like, oh. The entire film is just massive expressions constantly. Oh. <laughs> she's basically the worker from Chick-fil-A from a few months back that went viral. What? While this is going on, the kids are back at the ranch playing a game of hide and go seek, which is the perfect opportunity. This is the perfect opportunity for Aunt to show Agnes that Papa has a bunch of different watches that have different names engraved on the back, etched on the materials. Agnes is like, your dad has a lot of watches. He's like, oh my God, you dumb bitch. Look, look. Huh. Okay. Oh, is this not... This might not be normal to have different names on the watches and have like 30 watches. After a wonderful dinner for someone, they head back to the house, they go to bed, and the wife gets up at night because, I don't know, just parental instinct or something. She checks on her daughter and oh my God, she's not in the bed. Neither is aunt. Where could they possibly be? What horrific unspeakable things are taking place? She heads on over to the owner's room and bam, the kids are sleeping in bed with these people. What the fuck? And that's going to be the final straw. She tells Ben they have to go. They get their things. They sneak out in the dead of night. And they're off. Really stupid decisions. Some really questionable choices. But you did it. You got out. Everything's fine. Now I'm guessing they're going to run over some spiked chain in the road. Or they're going to get sideswiped by a truck from some friend of Patty's. Something's going to derail these guys. Something that's not going to be so incredibly ridiculous that I won't scream internally for the entirety of the film going forward. There's no way they're going to turn around for a stuffed animal. They turn around for a stuffed animal. Agnes has high anxiety. And so she needs a support thing. Something that she can scratch or hug or something that can just give her some comfort like a fidget in this case it's her stupid ass bunny forgot the name we're gonna go with uh barry barry is not in the car they left his ass back at the fucking house and the dad's like not turning around not gonna happen Luis is like we're not doing a baby girl child baby child girl it's okay we're gonna be fine and agnes is like <laughs> It's not gonna be fine. I need my bunny. I need Baxter. And the mom's like, sweetie, you can't even remember this bunny's name, you dumbass. That's not what the name was a second ago. I need peppers. After a little bit more scratching, they say, all right, <laughs> kids, what do you do? And they turn around and go back. I'm a parent myself. I have children. I've also dealt with people with high anxiety. So it's it's a real thing for sure. But there's, there's other ways you can get around it, especially when it's a life or death situation. For instance, a lot of babies when they're first born and for a few months afterwards will scratch themselves. They get those nails and they start digging into their own skin because they're dumb babies. So they have little mittens you can put on. So maybe in the case of Agnes, you throw on some fucking winter gloves. That way she's not scratching her arms. You just throw some gloves on, keep them in the glove compartment. That's why it's a glove compartment. 
Or maybe you stop the car, the mom gets out, goes to the back seat and just hugs her and just holds on to her, puts her on her lap, says, hey, just, you got a friend in me, Woody. Third possibility is to say, hey, child, shut the fuck up. These people are scary and we think that they're probably up to no good. So it's either go back and get Mr. Hops, possibly lose your life, or just drive home and we'll find you another thing that you can cuddle. Rant aside, they go back to the ranch. The family's now up. They're, of course, confused, pissed. Patty does not understand why they left. But a big bombshell is dropped when Sierra reveals that they lost a baby girl themselves. That's why she was extra mama bear with Agnes. She wanted her in bed because she was crying. She was scared. And so, yeah, everything is sound in the world again. These people aren't completely unhinged and crazy. Oh, you lost a daughter, so you're trying to replace her with my daughter. That's less insane. That's more healthy. Let's stick around. It's around this point, I don't know exactly when, but there's a road trip with just Patty and Ben. <laughs> it might've been before they left, it doesn't matter, but the most random scene in the film where Patty starts playing the Bangles Eternal Flame on the radio and singing along with it. Close your eyes, give me your hand, darling. This part of the movie was awesome because that song is awesome. And that's it. Keep in mind, the entire premise of Speak No Evil and this couple is just to fuck with their meal, is to play with their food. It's not so subtly foreshadowed earlier when Patty and Ben are out in the field and he's got a gun and Ben won't shoot the fox. He's just on the scope looking at it. And he's like, no, I don't want to do it. And Patty's not upset about it. He's like, yeah, it's fine. I don't really care about the kill. It's all about the hunt. It's all about getting that creature in your sights. And we really get nothing more to go on than that. He's just a crazy person who likes to mess with people, then eventually kill them and take their child or daughter as a potential wife in the future. Because it's also revealed that his current wife was also an abductee. But for now, we're back at the house. People seem to be honky-dory. And speaking of, we're going to do some country music right now. The kids have prepared a talent show. This will go well. To the hit stylings of Cotton Eye Joe. Skip it the bat da ba da do I've been licking down I know. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Count I Joe. Ant is um he's not good. He doesn't have it. Doesn't have that performer in him. Alright? He could use a little ants in his pants to get moving, get shaking, get grooving. But no, he's stiff as a board. And this is gonna piss Patty off to no end. Patty is livid with this child. Making him replay, redo the song multiple times. Agnes does not want anything to do with it. And she's just out. She's just, she's completely at odds with everything. Patty takes things to the brink. He gets out of control and he has to go lie down. This gives Ant the window he needs to show Agnes what's really going down. He sneaks into his drunken dad's room, unhooks, unclasps, if you will, the key that's gonna take him to the barn where he can show her what's actually happening. They go down into the cellar where they find a massive collection of different ins and outs from travelers weary that have come to this place and never left. He busts out the scrapbook and this is where we're gonna get our big aha moment. He starts flipping pages, showing Agnes that specific families are always targeted it's always a husband, wife, and child. And they come back here. At some point, they're killed. And then they steal from them their money, their clothes, all of their desirables. Agnes is not thrilled to hear this. And I'm going to say this. that The kids in this movie are great. Um, outside of Ant not really talking at night when he should. Talking. <laughs> speak no evil, uh, but you know, telling her in his own way, communicating what's really happening. The kids do a great job in this film. And so he warns her that this shit is not gonna end well for the family. She very smartly pricks herself in the upper thigh, causing blood to trickle down, ruin the dress, and she can play off the period angle. Mom, I got my period, it's embarrassing. They head to the bathroom, they get Ben, he goes to the bathroom, and this is gonna lead to the final reveal that, oh my God, we're gonna die. Now we are in a Home Alone situation where this family is going to be fighting against a couple bad guys as they try to break into their own house. Actually, I forgot, we have a whole bunch of bullshit that happens first. <laughs> the, fa the family uses the period excuse to leave, all right, fine. They make their way to the car and, oh damn, what do you know? The, the tire is completely flat. Ben knows that they're in the end game now. These people don't want him to leave. Ben's just gonna try to drive on the tire flat, but Patty insists, I got all the tools right in this shed over here. Let me get them, let me help you. 
Ben plays along. He fixes the tire lickety split, but before they can leave, Patty also points out, wh whoops, your daughter's, your daughter's bunny is up on the rooftop. How'd it get up there? That's crazy. A storm must have blown it up there or something. And so the tension is building or something. We get a ladder. Ben goes up there. He can't hold on to it. Patty's down below shaking it. <laughs> oh, that was my fault, Ben. Sorry, bud. He gets the bunny that's completely fucked up. So, hey, congratulations, Agnes. You played yourself. Your shitty little comfort tool is dead on arrival. Ben hands it to his daughter. She's like, oh, thanks, Dad. Oh, eh. They finally get in the car and are permitted to leave. Aunt is going to open the gate, but Patty has this figured out. He's like, no, we don't need to. I got a little remote control. He opens it up. But as they get close, they see, they see the people throw Ant into the water. Ant can't swim. It was established earlier. And instead of just barreling through that gate, getting the fuck out of there, maybe going to the authorities, coming back later, he's going to stop. He's going to jump in the water to save Ant. I don't know how he plans on taking out James McAvoy, who looks like he's been hitting the juice bar pretty hard. But he's going to focus on this thing first. The gate is now closed, and they are now fucked. Fast forward. <laughs> They're now in a cellar chained up. There's a shotgun pointed at them by the missus. Patty's going to inject some sleeping agent into someone else. It's all, it's a complete shit show. Luis, who is the hero of this film and does everything and the dad does nothing, pulls out a box cutter that she grabbed earlier, slices the shit out of Patty. Hell breaks loose. Ben frees the kids. They get out of there, but they can't leave again because conveniently the third villain shows up, the guy that I think prepared the meal back at that little seaside resort. He's there too. And now we're finally in the house. The family's locked in, they're hiding, they're thinking of a plan. The wife asks Ben what they should do. Ben's like, I don't, I don't know anything, I suck. And this is where we get our Home Alone-esque play out where these bad guys are gonna try to break into their house. Luis is again doing everything, hiding the kids, finding something to fight back with. In this case, it's a disinfectant spray that contains a lot of toxins, which she uses against Patty. He sprays it all over her face. It's absolute bedlam at this point. Meanwhile, the other hillbilly douchebag puts up a ladder, he's climbing up the stairs, and he's in the house, moving around. Ben's hiding behind something with a hammer. Yeah, I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna show my worth, I'm gonna show my self. Bearded bad guy starts shooting at his wife and daughter. This prompts Ben, like it would any person, not even just a man, but anyone in general, to have such an emotional response such a hit of adrenaline that you would bust through there. Think Hugh Jackman Wolverine in X-Men 2 when the, the bad guys start opening fire in the mansion and Wolverine goes Rush! and he puts the claws through the guy's chest against the fridge yelling in his face. Rush! That's what I expected Ben to do. But instead he's like and he barely hits the guy, falls on his side, almost gets impaled into glass. Thankfully for Ben, his wife, aka the strong female lead, shows up, grabs the hammer, implants it into the back of the guy's head, killing him on impact. And frankly, it's about time. Ben's like, thanks, dear. I'll get the next one. But he won't. They make their way onto the rooftop. They start to scale down. It's like a three-story drop. As they're going down it, the crazy wife shows up with a shotgun. <laughs> points it out. But Luis is ready again on the other side of the window. Peekaboo, bitch. <laughs> Knocks her off the rooftop. <laughs> Fatality. Ben, in his infinite wisdom, decides the best way to get down from here is to just drop. He drops on his legs, <laughs> breaking one of them for sure, not realizing that just like five feet to the right of this rooftop, there is a shorter rooftop, and it's only like a one-story drop. This would have taken him no more than 20 seconds to just stand up on the roof, walk down to the smaller peak, and then slide down. But no, he's gonna opt for this because everything he does in this movie is dumb as shit. He helps the family get down just in time for Patty to make his final stand. He, by the way, Patty now, 
uh, looks like the Incredible Hulk. He was juicing in between shots and he comes out like boom, 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 boom. He grabs the daughter and he's like, you killed my wife, but it looks like I have someone else to take care of me. He has a gun to their daughter. Fortunately, Ben has a gun pointed right at him as well. And there's no way he's going to screw this. He throws the gun. He drops it. What the fuck? Patty's like, drop the gun. This is their only leverage. Now all Patty has to do is go, kish, kish, kish. No, I'll keep you. What, what was the thought here? What was the end game? I don't actually even remember now how they thwart him. If the daughter does something, if the mom like runs up Ben's back and then does like a triple axle flip over the side of Patty and then just snaps his neck. It doesn't matter. They get him. He's on the ground. Ben has a shotgun pointed right at his face. And Patty's like, <coughs> Ben finally able to make his mark, to make his stamp, to get to that next point. No, I'm not going to stoop to your level, sir. Good day. And comes running over with a brick. I'll fucking do a bitch. Before that scene happened, I thought, oh man, this family can adopt Ant. They can have a nice little situation there. But then the brick thing happened. I thought, um, no, maybe, maybe not. Who knows what's going to trigger him next? And we know Ben's not going to stand up for himself. I could imagine a week goes by, Luis gets home and her husband's dead on the floor, face completely destroyed. And she looks over at Ant and she's like, yeah, that, that makes sense. I don't even need to know the context. I'm sure he did something stupid. When they were hanging off the side of the rooftop, I half expected the wife to just pick them both up Ben and the daughter and be like Ugh, get over here because she does everything else in the film so that's speak no evil the movie winds down with him driving away the four of them and a reminiscent shot to the beginning a foreshadow of sorts he's looking at the rear view mirror that's how the movie started he was with his family going there for the first time the, the, the tragedy the trauma is over and we just get a final shot of him crying, tear trickling down the cheek. Listen, this wasn't horrible for me. It's just, it was a frustrating watch because of the decisions. I know some people can look past it. I know it is part of the storyline. That's the reason that these things play out the way they do. Because the bad guys prey on the weak. They prey on the people that are going to give in easy. They, they case it out. That still doesn't make it much more fun to play. That doesn't make it much more exciting for me because I don't want to watch incompetent people get tortured. It's more interesting to me if I can see competent people get taken advantage of. And you might say like, oh, that doesn't happen. That's why we don't have those movies. It does happen. We have movies like that. Or you can at least do it with incompetent people in a much smarter way. This just, this just kind of frustrated me from back to front. But I can understand why people are enjoying it. I get it. It just wasn't for me. And I went with three other people and all of us were really getting frustrated by this one. Let me know your thoughts though. If you liked it, if you loved it, if you thought, eh, it was fine. It was watchable. That's that's about where I'm at with it. Leave your comment, like the video. Please again, thank you for subscribing. This was a long video, a long breakdown. It takes time, it takes energy. I would love to have you stick around. If you love what I'm doing, you can leave a super thanks right in this video, a couple bucks that says, hey Adam, love it, keep it up. Or you can become a patron member at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Lastly, second channel, Adam Does Rants. Subscribe to it. It's funny. I'm ranting about first world problems, hoping to make you laugh. We could use it. All right. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.